Okay then my friends, so far we've made a couple of different custom widgets, the home one and then also the coffee prefs one which is actually embedded in the home one somewhere. Now both of these are stateless widgets as denoted by this thing right here where it says extends stateless widget and what does that mean exactly? Well it means that these widgets, the home one and the coffee prefs one, will never have their state changed. For example, they don't contain any dynamic data which might change over time or in response to something like clicking a button. Also, their UIs don't change either. Nothing changes size, color, position. We don't hide or remove content. In other words, once a stateless widget gets built using the build function, it rarely gets rebuilt outside of a few edge cases. It always stays pretty much the same. So if we ever wanted a more dynamic widget that might show changing data or rely on changing data or update its UI quite frequently, maybe in response to a user event, then you'll need to use a different kind of widget, a stateful widget. So the stateful widget can contain state, data or values that change at some point and then trigger a rebuild of the widget tree in response to that uh, state change to reflect it. For example, in our coffee prefs widgets, we want to output a strength for the coffee and also a number of sugars. And I want those to be output by a sequence of these images, the coffee bean and the sugar cube. So say for example, we set a strength value of three, we output three coffee bean images. If we have say two sugars in the coffee, and the value of that sugar state was two, we would output two sugar cube images. And when those values change, the number of images that we output for each of those uh, values updates to reflect that change. So if I was to click on a button to increase the strength from three to four, then in response to that, we rebuild the tree and output the extra coffee bean image. So there's four showing instead of three. And the same would be true for sugars too. And that's what happens with a stateful widget. We can define values which are just regular variables within the widget and then we can update those values and trigger the build function to rerun and rebuild the tree to reflect those value changes. Okay then, so that's what a stateful widget is and why we'd use them. Now let's try turning this stateless widget into a stateful one so we can use some state within it. Now there's actually a really easy way to convert a stateless widget into a stateful one within VS Code and that is just to click on the class name for this widget and wait for this light bulb to appear. Now when you click on this you're going to get a little context menu with a couple of things we can do with this class. What we want to do is convert it into a stateless widget so just click on that to do it. And when you do that you're going to notice a few things that just happened. First of all, this coffee prefs class now inherits from stateful widget and not stateless widget. So now it inherits the ability to have state. Secondly, the class now contains this create state method, which returns a state object with the generic type of coffee prefs passed into the state object. Now you don't need to worry too much about this syntax. Just know that we have this create state function, which gets us a state object for this coffee prefs widget and associates that state object with this widget. The way it gets that state object is by making an instance of this coffee pref state class, which VS Code kindly created for us as well, when we turn the stateless widget into a stateful one. So you can see that this coffee pref state class actually extends the state class, which is why when we create an instance of this class, we're returning a state object. Now, it's inside this state class right here that we have the build function which returns the widget tree. So Flutter has now moved this build function from the widget class itself into the state class, right? And that's because when we use state or data, we define that state within the state class. And since the build function most likely relies on that state, we have the build function within the state class as well. Again, a lot of this syntax will become second nature to you when you start building more stateful widgets. But the key points to remember are these. First, we now have two classes, one for the widget itself, which extends the stateful widget class, and then one for the state, which extends the state class. Second, we override a create state method up here in the widget class, which returns a state object for this widget by creating an instance of this second state class. And third, it's inside this state class that we now have the build function, and it's in here as well that we'll be creating state values for that build function to use within. So then, now we have a stateful widget 
let's have a little go at using some state within it. So what we're going to do in this lesson then is we're going to create two pieces of state, one for the strength of the coffee and one for how many sugars are going to be in the coffee. And we're going to output those values right here where we had code three at the minute for the strength and two for the sugars. So first of all, let's create those state values. And we do that inside this state object right here. So let's create an integer for the strength. And we're going to set that off to be one to begin with. And then for the sugars, we'll say one as well. So these are the initial values of these two pieces of state. And this is all we do, by the way, we're just creating variables. There's nothing special about it. Just two variables that we can use now within this build method. So what I'd like to do is dynamically output these variables instead of hard coding these things right here. So let's come to this text widget and we have to pass a string into a text widget. So we'll pass a string and then to output a variable within a string, it's dollar sign, then the name of that variable, which in this case is going to be strength. And then if we hover over this, we can see invalid constant value. So that's this thing right here. So now, because this text will change at some point or Flutter is detecting it might change at some point because it's based on this variable, it's saying, look, we can't make this a constant anymore because it might change. So get rid of that. Let's do the same thing down here for sugars. So instead of two dollar sign sugars, get rid of the const as well. And there we go. So if I save this now, we're going to see one and one over here. Now, at the minute, it's always going to be one because we never increase or decrease these values. So let's do that now. So we know that when we click on these buttons right here, it invokes this function, increase strength and increase sugars. So these two functions right here. So when we increase the strength, what we want to do is basically increase this number. So let's do that. I'm going to say right here that the new value of strength is equal two and then we're going to use a ternary operator actually we could just say strength plus one like this right and then it would basically add one to whatever strength is but if we do this then it's going to go to one two three four five six seven eight nine ten there's going to be no upper limit so we could get to 200 and that would be bizarre i'm not going to want to show eventually 200 coffee beans on this row so i want there to be some kind of um, um, upper limit and that upper limit is going to be five so we're going to use the ternary operator to say, look, is strength less than five? If it is, then we can still add one to it. If it's not, then we're going to recycle back around and set strength to be one again. So as soon as we get to five, if we press plus again, it's going to go back to one. All right. So we'll say strength less than five. And then a question mark. This is how we create a ternary operator. So we do a little condition first of all, and then we have two values right here after the question mark, the one on the left of a colon which if this is true, will execute. And then one on the right of the colon, if this is false, it will execute that instead. So let's say strength plus one here, and then a colon, and then we'll just say one. So we're saying strength is equal to, figure this out, if strength is less than five, then strength is equal to strength plus one. If strength is not less than five, meaning it must be five at this point, then we're going to reset strength to be one instead. Does that make sense? All right. So we're going to do a similar thing for sugars. So let me grab this thing right here and I'm going to paste it down here. So we'll change this and this and this to sugars. And this time I want sugars to be able to have zero as well, because that makes sense. You probably won't have a strength of zero, but you might have zero amount of sugars in your coffee. So I want this to be the initial value or rather not the initial value. The initial value is one over here. But once we get to five sugars, if we press again, then it recycles back around and it goes to zero rather than one. OK. All right, then. So if we run this now, if I save this, what's going to happen? Is it going to work? Well, we are changing the number and we're outputting those numbers right here. So you would think it would work, right? So let's try this. No. Nope. And no, so they're not working. So what's going on then? Well, we are increasing these values. We are doing that, but that doesn't mean anything. If this value changes, it's not going to automatically re-trigger Flutter to run this build function and therefore update this because this build function needs to run again for this to be updated. So how do we trigger that build function then if it's not just changing the values? Well, we have to put that change with inside a special function called set state. 
And this is a little bit like React, where we set state or set a value of state in a component. So I'm going to say set state like so. And this takes in a function. And inside this function, we can do whatever change in state we want. So this, for example. Now, if we put that with inside set state, then this set state function does trigger a rebuild right here once this is done. So now if we increase the strength over here, then we can see it goes up all the way to five, then back down to one. Awesome. So let's do the same thing for sugars. I'm going to say set state and then inside here, pass a function. Inside the function, we update the state and then we can save that and try this out. And yep, now sugars works. And this time it goes to zero rather than one because we said that right here. Awesome. So then my friends, now we're successfully working with states inside a stateful widget.